All right, folks, so in this video, we're gonna talk about filters. And filters are a great way to help you achieve a certain look in your videos, and there are many options out there on the market. And lately, I've been using the filter system from Smallrig for my iPhone 15 Pro Max as it's convenient, and they really work great. However, before you go out and buy these filters for your iPhone, there are a few things you need to know as they come with some caveats. Now, I haven't seen many mobile creators talk about it, so I thought, why not share my experience and give you my thoughts on using these filters over the past few months. And by the way, this video isn't sponsored by Smallrig. I genuinely enjoy using their products. However, full disclosure, I do have affiliate links in the video description below if you want to support my channel and purchase these filters. So which filters should you get? The filters I've got that I think every mobile video creator should have are the VND, CPL, and Mist filter. So a VND filter, also known as a variable ND filter, is excellent for adjusting the exposure without changing the shutter speed or aperture, which could affect the desired look. Now I typically follow the 180 shutter rule, so I set my shutter speed to double the frame rate, which is one over 50 to achieve that cinematic motion blur in my videos. And to compensate for the exposure, I can add a VND and twist this part right here to get a proper exposure. And this allows me to maintain those cinematic settings while keeping a proper exposure. Next up is the CPL filter, also known as circular polarizer filter, which reduces glare and reflection such as those from water or windows. Now, if you shoot outdoors on a sunny day, you can twist the CPL filter to make the sky and grass appear more vibrant. And lastly, we have the mist filter, which adds a dreamy feel to your footage. It softens the highlight and adds a subtle glow perfect for romantic or dreamy shots. So if you're filming a wedding, a mist filter is a must have. It also helps reduce the over sharpening that iPhones often produce, getting closer to that cinematic look. Now, what I like about Smallrig's filter system is that you can also purchase a universal magnetic filter adapter ring, making it compatible with most smartphones. Now, I prefer to use it with Smallrig's cage and the magnetic filter adapter ring that has an M mount uh, on it. Now, the filters have all a 52 millimeter thread and they're magnetic. And this means you don't need to screw it on. You can easily snap it on and off. And the best part, like you've seen, it's stackable, which means you can attach multiple filters simultaneously, creating a unique look for your footage. So for a car scene I did in a previous shoot, uh, I've attached a mist filter, a CPL filter, and lastly, the VND filter to achieve that look. And the quality looks really great. Now, later on, I realized that I didn't even need the CPL filter, but we'll get to that later. Now I can tell that these filters filters are definitely made out of high quality material. Now, the more filters you stack, the less sharp your image will get, but because of the over sharpening of iPhones, this is actually a good thing as it creates a softer and more natural look in your video. And the filters are also relatively inexpensive compared to other brands. Depending on the filter you're getting, they run between $25 and $50, making them a great addition to your camera without breaking the bank. Now, especially if you're shooting professional video on your phone, out of all the filters, the VND is definitely a must have. So let's now talk about what I don't like about this filter system. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the vignetting. It's only an issue when you stack the filters and use the ultra wide angle lens. And once you stack them, you'll notice darker areas in the corner of your shot. Now, I don't have the image stabilization enabled because I wanted the whole frame to be shown. So as soon as I start stacking a second filter, you'll have some vignetting going on. And when you add a third one, it becomes even more noticeable. You could digitally zoom in to eliminate the vignetting, but when using three stacked filters, it's best to go with the standard wide angle lens. So that is just something to be aware of. The next thing would be the strength of the magnets. Now the magnets on each are pretty strong, but when stacking the filters and adding the VND at the end, the VND could come off easily if you accidentally get your fingers on it. Now it never came off when I shot handheld with it and you have to shake it quite a bit to get it off, but be aware that if you hit it you know, against something, it could fall off. Now I really love the convenience of the magnets, but in some scenarios, I do like being able to screw the filters securely into place, especially in action type videos. Now one thing that's a bit tricky is adjusting the VND filter when it's stacked with other filters. 
filters. When you attach just the VND, there is a stopper to prevent the whole filter from rotating. However, when you stack them, there are no stoppers in place for the VND. So you need to hold the VND filter while twisting it to control the light coming in. It's not the end of the world, but it can be a slight inconvenience. And something else I've noticed is that you can use the VND as a CPL when twisting it. I noticed that during my car shoot at the very end, so I was able to only stack a mist filter and a VND on top. Now keep in mind that you have to twist the VND itself, not the part that controls the light coming in. And since it doesn't have a stopper, you are able to twist the entire VND and get rid of the reflections. And that's also good because I noticed some heavy color shifts too when stacking the CPL with the VND and you would have to gently twist it to get the white balance right. Without the CPL, using only the mist and the VND on top, I had no color shifts at all. However, if you're shooting in bright sunny day and want to make some of the colors pop, the CPL would still be necessary. Next up would be the compatibility. And I love how small rig provides different cage plates to support different lens mounts. However, it would also have been great if they made those adapter rings for each of those back mount plates. For example, I have a plate that supports 17 millimeter threaded lens, which is compatible with the Sandmark lenses over here. And I also own quite a few of them. However, if I switch between using lenses and then using the filters, I would have to screw off the 17 millimeter plate and switch to the M mount plate since the adapter ring uses an M mount. So hopefully they create adapter rings for all mount types in the future. That would be amazing. I mean, they're already doing a fantastic job of creating different mount plates for all types of lenses, making more cost effective for us mobile creators. Now, lastly, I wish the end mount adapter ring had a tighter fit. It does work and hold the filter in place, but you can easily move it and I can imagine it getting loose over time. So what I found that works is to add a bit of gaff tape around the inner ring to make it a tighter fit. And this way I don't have to worry about losing the adapter ring or it accidentally uh, falling off while shooting. While the filter system might not be perfect with a little workaround, it has been a great addition to my mobile filmmaking kit. I've been using it a lot to achieve a cinematic look in my mobile videos and will continue to use this setup in my future projects. Now let me know what you think about Small Rig's filter system and what your experiences are. Now if you want to learn more about Small Rig's cage, be sure to check out this video right here where I go more in depth about its features. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, take care and see you in the next video.